Hello everyone, uh, Brian P here. So welcome back to my channel. And uh, today I have uh, Tom here, who has an experience of being uh, both a data engineer and a data architect uh, with the various uh, multinational companies. And so today we'll just want to explore the career uh, about being a data architect. Okay, so I'll just be asking him like uh, four questions and uh, which will give us an overview of those areas. So Tom, welcome. Welcome, yeah, hey. Yeah, hi. Hey. hey Brian, how are you? I'm good. So um, uh, I have a, a lot of friends who tend to ask me about uh, what does uh, the job description of a uh, data engineer and a uh, data architect entail? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, like as you said, I, I have experience like, you know, more than 10 years in uh, data engineering, uh, data architecture. Um, basically, if, you, if you're asking about um, you know what's the difference? There's actually, there's actually I would focus first. There's a lot of common things mm -hmm. like you know, uh, obviously both working with uh, data, about uh, working with uh, different uh, platforms. Uh, the kind of the main difference is that the data architects uh, they they work more on the conceptual layer, they uh, on the hi higher uh, I would say a layer, how higher level they uh, basically. Um, more design, more uh, working on the uh, on the on the platform, like you know how how things should work, uh, how to deliver uh, some some requirements, which are usually uh, requested by by business. Uh, data engineers more are more like kind of executors who getting you know specific uh, uh, instruction guidance from uh, architects. So it's like you know the same like you have architects in any other uh, I would say field, like mm -hmm. uh, in the construction field that. Mm -hmm. Architects, you know, design. They plan. They were making sure that everything, uh, you know, would be working fine. And engineers, basically, they executing what uh, architects uh, will uh, will tell them. So architects have to make sure that uh, you know they understand the requirement. They have to make sure that the the, the her, her, their design it's uh, it, it will be working fine. Um, so specifically in, in data, there's different uh, kind of. Uh, Frameworks you have like op op uh, you have uh, data warehouses where you have which are hosted in uh, cloud uh, like you know for example Snowflake or uh, Redshift uh, 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 databases and you have also different frameworks like uh, Spark Kafka to to do different things so so um, architect is more the guy who who knows most of these uh, technologies mm -hmm. and based on the experience can. Um, uh, can kind of uh, design whole platform to, to deliver things which are requested by business. Uh, engineer usually is focused more on some specific subjects, uh, and engineers uh, are doing the more more low level work. Uh, they basically uh, usually code uh, things uh, because in in the in the existing um, data data platforms is a lot of about programming. Uh, in past. Uh, it was more about uh, like SQL, about uh, data modeling. Uh, the still, data modeling is the case, but now also from data engineers, it requires a lot of coding. Like you know, let's say if you do uh, application like Spark, you, you could code in uh, Scala mostly in, in, in Python or in, in Java. Mm -hmm. If you if you if you work with Kafka, the same Java, Scala, maybe Python sometimes. Uh, so, so it, the data engineer now is uh, slightly kind of uh, has different responsibility than used to have in past, where uh, the work mostly was limited to SQL. Mm -hmm. Now the data engineer is more like a software developer who needs to develop applications. So, so yeah, that's a kind of more or less high level. You know, basically, uh, data data architects are working on the conceptual kind of approach, like they they design things uh, based on the requirements they have, and they're giving guidelines to data engineers. And then data engineers execute uh, this, um, you know, this kind of uh, design, and they they usually develop in some code. Uh, either it will be SQL or you know different languages which I mentioned. So that's the that's the main ma main difference, I would say. Ah, okay, yeah. pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah. So I was about to ask you about uh, the frameworks and the languages, which I believe you also covered in the, in the explanation. Um, SQL is key, Python is key. Yeah, uh, SQL. Depends, I think yeah, each, yeah. each data engineer should uh, mm -hmm. should know SQL because mm -hmm. 
in SQL, uh, you know, it's a structured query language. It's mm -hmm. something that you can describe the data. You can, you know, you can uh, do all the transformations. You can do all the joins between uh, different uh, tables. So, so, so SQL definitely is the key. It's the main requirement that all data mm -hmm. engineers should definitely know. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as you said, the different uh, languages, different uh, stack. Like it depends on the application, as I mentioned before. Uh, the very popular application Spark for, for data that we use, use for data processing, for data engineering, mm -hmm. also for data science. So, so then, uh, you know, uh, obviously Scala is one of the very popular language that is mm -hmm. used in, 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 in data engineering. And the second one obviously is Python as well. And so I, I would say these two languages are kind of, I mean, apart from the SQL, which is the obviously used everywhere in the data databases and also in, in uh, Spark you can use it, but uh, in terms of software development, definitely Scala and Python, I would say, would be the key key languages that uh, data mm -hmm. engineers should, should know. Okay, so I don't know if for your experience there is this kind of uh, situation where, for example, like uh, people who didn't go to college or didn't study computer science, sh shifting to being a data engineer, because we've seen, like, for example, in software development, people just uh, tend to use online resources, uh, maybe start with the web development, do HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and start being a front-end dev, later on run, learn about React or Angular. Yeah. So for, for a data engineering role, if someone wants to be a self-taught, uh, is it possible? And if yes, uh, what advice would you give uh, that person to start? Where, sh where should that person start from? Yes, definitely, definitely. Uh, you, you see a lot of shifts from mostly from this side, like you know, the person who's been a software developer, like uh, was uh, developing either Python applications or, uh, as you said, I don't know, maybe some some languages like JavaScript, uh, some sort of web development, because it's so big requirement for on the market now for for data engineers. A lot of a lot of. Uh, uh, software developer switching uh, mm -hmm. to um, to data data engineering uh, uh, because they have already skill set for uh, for the programming skill set as I mentioned before for data engineer uh, you know you have to know these languages and then the, the things what these guys usually they have to understand and I, I seeing that it's very uh, quite often missing from their side to understand data so understand uh, you know the whole concept the dimensional modeling you know so so. That way, they they they, they will uh, they will know how to build uh, ETL jobs. Uh, then also to understand yeah the all ETL processing all dependencies you know. Mm -hmm. So so this is kind of a, I think challenge for software developers to have that they have to really understand the, the data architecture data. Okay. Um, and then that will let them uh, that help them to, to kind of de develop these data applications. So definitely uh, you know it's it, I think it's pretty easy to switch, uh, but. Uh, it's not kind of uh, you know that they can uh, naturally switch. They has, they have to catch up the data, the, the the knowledge about the data. Mm -hmm. And as you as you asked before about uh, you know if it's, uh, it's, uh, some some sub levels, obviously I think the beauty of all of computer science is that you don't have to really have college. You don't have to have master degree. It's enough that you you spend time. Um, you know yourself. Uh, you know in, in Google, you read some documentations, and you can you can uh, you know you can do yourself. You can uh, buy account on the let's say AWS uh, or anywhere. Uh, you know some some you can get some uh, you know free account for for some time, or you know you can uh, spend very little money, and you can very easily to kind of uh, play with with, uh, with uh, all the applications with all the data. So definitely that shift. Uh, yes, it's it's a very common thing to happen now. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. So, uh, it's good uh, for you. You've kind of experienced uh, working in the US. You've worked in uh, in Ireland. Uh, you've worked also in Dubai right now. Yeah, China as well. Yeah, China. Places, yeah. yeah. So you tend to experience, like, for example, uh, in Ireland, uh, you try to fill like ten positions for a data engineer but could uh, barely manage to get like three yeah yeah exactly yeah. like you know in, in the market it's uh, as i said i think it's mm -hmm. a shortage mm -hmm. uh, in that sense there's a lot of jobs because all the uh, you know big organi organizations small organizations medium organizations mm -hmm. they they require data because data is becoming the core of mm -hmm. many organizations people the companies want to understand uh, you know the business uh, behind and you know they can do that using data for all the you know dashboards for 
uh, predictive analytics for you know for machine learning, uh, data science stuff. So, so yeah, um, this huge require, this huge uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunities, but uh, I still have feeling that there is not enough uh, resources. So, so, so that's why a lot of organizations they looking uh, outside Ireland. For example, I think in general in Europe, uh, what I see that companies from from uh, you know that uh, which have. Uh, uh, you know, which are located in Germany, in Netherlands, in, in Ireland, UK, you know, mostly they they looking you know, for resources everywhere in the world because mm -hmm. it's so so difficult to, to find uh, people with relevant skill sets. So there's a, there's a lot of guys who are just starting, who are kind of playing on, you know, some Udemy, uh, you know, courses, online courses, but they don't really have, uh, you know, practical experience. Mm -hmm. And this is actually the key thing uh, when you play with big data sets, when you yeah. work with big data sets, because mm -hmm. it's always easy to do uh, things, uh, you know, uh, small uh, small things, but mm -hmm. once you get really big uh, data volume, co complex data volume, non-structured data, the, then, you know, your experience coming into play, that, you know, you know how to optimize jobs in Spark, you know how to, you know, how to, uh, you know, design a kind of fault tolerant uh, process in Kafka, stream data to your uh, data lake. So, uh, yes, so definitely, as you said, it is a shortage on the market in terms of resources. And, uh, you know, I think it's a very good opportunity for any people who like to code, uh, who, who like technology, to, to go to these uh, roles, to data engineering. Uh, if they enjoy to do that, definitely there is, uh, there is uh, plenty of jobs for them waiting, uh, I think, in, in anywhere in the world, like you know, around the world, I would say not only in Europe, but as you said, Dubai as well as, as we, we are now, but also in US, you know, in, in Asia, in China, right, in, in uh, definitely Japan and all the countries, uh, there's a lot of opportunities. Okay, okay, that, uh, that was a really interesting insights. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I believe that comes uh, to the end of the question. Yeah. So in case uh, you viewers have anything uh, you want to ask, um, just feel free to reach out and uh, I'll direct your questions to Tom and come back with the yeah. feedback. Yeah. Okay, thank you and also thank you Tom thank for, you. Uh, thank you, Brian. for appearing here. Okay, bye. Bye.